Sun uh, is going to have ha has a very very special day tomorrow, which relates to what we've just been thinking about. What do I say? Um, on Tuesday, um, Andrew will be graduating with the RAF, having done ten weeks very grueling training. Um, and then he just awaits to go on to be posted to, um, well, first of all, to do trade training and then to be posted. Yeah? <laughs> I don't know what else to say. <laughs> um, in, in my last uh, parish, um, I, it came to my attention after about eight years that there was something called f army families. And um, I had neglected to understand, <coughs> or wasn't my fault, I didn't really know what an army family was because I'd never met an army family. But we now have in our midst with David and Wendy what they would have called an army family. What that means is, as I came to understand, that the whole family carries um, their soldier through whatever comes his way. Um, we all recognize it's a precarious thing to take up this particular profession. It's it's, it must be difficult uh, for Wendy and David to release their son, uh, Andrew, into this, um, into this work, into this profession. So we, with them, carry that burden. Uh, I'd like us to pray for them in a moment. Um, and, uh, you see, as well as feeling anxious about it, I'm sure they're probably feeling rather proud as well that Andrew hacked it through the incredible ordeals he had to go through. And we, we heard every Monday in the staff team the latest update and what the poor man had had to go through. Look, poly he's apparently been polishing his boots since the day he began his training for tomorrow, it was Tuesday. Um, so a sense of pride as well, but also um, I should think from a Christian point of view, um, a sense of pride that their son is becoming a peacemaker. He's been called to being a peacemaker, walking in the footsteps of Jesus, <coughs> the Prince of Peace. Yeah? So, uh, David, would you come forward as well now, please? And anybody else who kind of feels a particular burden for this family, for the Peck family, um, one or two, would you, would you come forward and pray for them? We have a army family now, Miss. Ted, you're, you've been a soldier. I know that. You carry that on your heart. Um, but would anybody else like to come and, and, and pray? That's thank you so much. Who feel, who feel the, the, the um, <coughs> enormity of this, really, and want to carry uh, Andrew and let the, his parents, Wendy, David, through these months and years to come. And there'll be great joy as well on Tuesday when he's um, graduate, when he's a Thank you, let's pray. Lord God, we bring before you, Andrew, First of all, we just ask you, Lord, that your love will be upon him, that your peace will be with him, that your hand will be on him, whatever he does, wherever he goes. Lord, well, may he never lose the sight of you. May he always feel your presence whatever situation he is in. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. 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 Oh, Father, just thank you for Andrew. Thank you for the strength and the courage that you've given him over the past 10 weeks. I just ask you to just continue to bless him, continue to carry him, continue to walk alongside him through all that he has to do, wherever he has to go. <coughs> and we just thank you again, Father God, for you know for carrying him through and to allow him to be with him on Tuesday and to be with his family and all the time that he's away, Father God. And we just thank you and take your peace right now and take your covering of safety 
somebody in all your people. Thank you, Sister Barbara. Amen. Father, as your presence goes with Andrew, just pray that he be a beacon uh, amongst those he comes across mm. in his uh, when he trains, when he gets uh, into a more active service, that people would look at Andrew and see something different and he'd be able to speak about you. Mm. Amen. 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 sacrifice he has made and will continue to make and mm. we ask that you would meet with him in the particularly unique ways that he needs your help at this time mm. and we ask uh, as Helen's prayed that you would be a bright light in that place that mm. the temptation to conform and to mm. try to secure his identity by being like others mm. would uh, he would be delivered from that and his identity would be found in you mm. and in his the heritage he has from his and the, the upbringing to fear you and to put you first. And to that end, Lord, we pray that you would indeed make of Andrew a peacemaker, uh, even within the, the family of which he's become a part. Uh, perhaps many people with lots of pain and brokenness in their own lives, we pray that he would introduce them to the Prince of Peace, that he would find himself in conversations, particularly in perhaps stressful situations where people are vulnerable and open, to the things of God, that Andrew would find he has many opportunities uh, to speak of you and to point others to you. And we pray, too, that in his work he would be excellent, mm -hmm. that you'd bless him, that you'd make of him a, an excellent um, member of the RAF and, and one who would bring glory to your name by the way he executes his work. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Your love never fails, never gives up never gives up on you. That might be the prayer of Jesus. That might be the words of Jesus. Your love never gives up, never runs out, never fails, never runs out on me. Jesus knew that his father's love would never run out on him, never fail him. Even when he went through Gethsemane, even when he went beyond Gethsemane to his arrest and to his trial and to all those false witnesses, to that torture, to that crucifixion, even through that all, even when he cried on the cross, Father, Father, why have you forsaken me? In the depths of being, he, his being, he must have known that your love never runs out on me. He knew that because he knew that he was the son of the Father. Yeah? And that passage I read just a moment ago from the scriptures was from Proverbs uh, chapter 4. You might like to just have a get, grab your Bibles and find Proverbs, because I'm going to share some thoughts from Proverbs. And Lee is going to come up in here in a minute. Destiny, do you want to go and get Glee for us? Uh, thank you. Um, you'll find it around about page 635, Proverbs. 634 of Proverbs. Right, yes. Just find the book of Proverbs, okay? 640, round about there. 638, around there. I'm just going to ad lib until, until Lee walks in the door. So, Jesus knew he had a father. And here's the Proverbs attributed <coughs> to Solomon, King, son of David. And if you look at the, the, the Proverbs, just go back to chapter 1 for a moment, okay, and find verse 8 there, right? What does it say there, chapter 1, verse 8? Listen, my son, to your father's instruction. Chapter, uh, verse 10, my son, here is the appeal. Go on to chapter 2, 
What is the first verse say? My son, come in Lee. My son, if you accept my words and store up my commands within you, turning your ear to wisdom and applying your heart to understanding, indeed, if you call out for insight and cry aloud for understanding, and if you look for it as for silver and search for it as hidden treasure, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find knowledge of God. Chapter 3. How does it begin? My son, do not forget my teaching, but keep my commands on your heart. How does it go on in chapter 4? Listen, my sons, to a father's instruction. Pay attention and gain understanding. Chapter 5. My son, pay attention to my wisdom. Chapter 6. My son, if you put up security for a neighbor, etc., etc., Chapter 6, verse 20. My son, keep your father's command. Verse, chapter 7. My son, keep my words and store up my commands within you. Seven chapters. Don't go away, Lee. <laughs> Where's he going? Bring him back. Um, um, seven chapters devoted to, to communicating the message that a son has to hear from his father the instruction that has the wisdom that has been accumulated over generations, right? Accumulated wisdom being passed on from father to son. Now, as I said at the beginning of the service, we are a fatherless generation. Many people are growing up. We were thinking about them in the men's prayer breakfast yesterday morning. Many, many people are growing up, children are growing up, who have no father even present in their home. Many are growing up who only see their fathers from time to time. And many grow up whose father may be living under the same roof as them, but he's absent to them for one reason or another. He's not really there for them. We as a church... Christ Church have responded to that colossal ocean of need out there, some of it's in here, by appointing, by creating a post for a youth pastor. That work has been done faithfully. It has been done with huge skill and devotion by Lee over these years. He has been a father to countless sons in particular, but young people growing up who have really had no father other than maybe a biological father. So Lee's come now, he's prepared something he wants to pass around for you to read that gives you an idea of the kind of work that he does behind the scenes, unseen to all of us. It's really important we understand this, that much of his work happens out there, out, out and about in the town. Yeah? Um, the fact that we don't see it means it has to be brought to our attention, otherwise we wouldn't even know it's happening. So Lee, would you like to pass those round now? Or something, somebody, yeah, do you, yeah, do you want to take over now? You take over and I'll sit down. Morning everyone. Good morning. Good morning. It's a bit quieter up here than it is downstairs. I suppose that's to be expected. Um, Thank you, Josh. Um, Mine's just asked me to, to speak to you a little bit about some of the things that I get involved in, because as with a lot of things that take place in the church, unless you're involved with it personally, you don't necessarily know that, it, that it's going on. So what I'm going to do, I'll be glad to know, I'm only going to speak for about two, three minutes, and then I've prepared some sheets, um, which I'm just going to hand out. If you're going to probably have to share one between sort of two or three, because um, I was cutting down my print, uh, printer ink uh, usage and stuff. Um, but if you, hopefully you'll all get a chance to read it. There's also a newsletter, um, which I'll give out, but that's literally take that home and read that. Um, you don't need to, to read that here. One of the things I, I spend a lot of time doing week by week is mentoring. Uh, mentoring some local young people off the estate, some uh, in Hitmill High School, um, some are young people actually that are known to us in our church. Um, and I can remember when I first started youth work, there was a, a great youth work, he's a bit of a guru in the youth work world called Fuzz Kitto. Um, he's an Australian man and he's got this big bushy hair 
um, and he gathered the name years ago called Fuzz. And he came to Luton because uh, uh, Chris Curtis invited him to come over. And he stood up, and I was told that this guy, what this guy didn't know about youth work wasn't worth knowing. So I'd, I'm not a note taker, never have been, but I decided that he's that good, I'm going to write down some of what he says. And he stood up and he said the three most important things about youth work. So I wrote down one, two, three. And I, I was there with my pen ready. He said, number one, relationship. So I wrote down relationship. And he said, number two, relationship. Then he said, number three is relationship. And that actually was, it was kind of like the, the, the forming of how I did youth work. And there's loads of ways you can do youth work. You can do big events and, and you can do all sorts of things. Or you can actually spend time getting involved in knowing young people, being involved in their lives. Yes, putting on some different things for them, but actually you can actually really, really be there for them no matter what. And that, that's the way I've, I've tended to do things. I also spend quite a <coughs> bit of time when I'm not mentoring, actually communicating with young people via social media. You know, love it or hate it, the internet's here to stay for the time being. Um, some of you have Facebook, some of you don't know what Facebook is, some of you don't want Facebook. Um, I work with young people, I, I, need to, I need to engage with them where they're at. So I use social media um, to actually try and be a positive influence on what is... Just quick show of hands, who's got Facebook? Yeah? Do you agree with me? There's some pretty negative stuff on there at times. People post all sorts of rubbish on there. Whereas the way I try and use it with young people is I try and put stuff on there that's affirming, that's positive, that actually that, that's biblical. So I share a lot of biblical thoughts on there. And just last week I posted, and I've encouraged some of the young people to watch, um, Billy Graham did a great video. It's just under half an hour. It's his 95th birthday. Can you believe Billy Graham's 95? Yes. And he put this great video together, which was a real outreach. It really was evangelistic. But he had a, a rap artist on there, and he had a, a Christian sort of pop singer on there. And this video, if you want to watch it, um, but you don't have Facebook, let me know afterwards, and I'll send you a YouTube link so you can actually watch it. Um, but if you do have Facebook and you've got me, it's on, my, it's on my wall, so do have a look. So I engage with young people using social media. We do a Bible study, a Bible group, on Tuesday night called GIFT. And actually one of the parents of one of our young people came up with the name GIFT. And it literally stands for Growing in Faith Together. And the way we're doing it at the moment, what we do is that young people come round. We usually have a, a drink and we have some snacks to start with. Um, and then we, we, we go into, we read a passage of the Bible, and we've done all sorts of ways. For a while we did some DVDs by Francis Chan. At the moment we're taking a passage and we're looking at some of the accounts of Jesus. So just last week we did when Jesus walked on the water and Peter got out of the boat and, and, and started walking towards Jesus. But we read it and then we watch it. So I borrowed this all singing, all dancing projector from my father-in-law and we project it onto the wall in the, in the house and we show the story. And then we ask a series of questions. You know, what was it like being there? Now, what was the weather like there? What did it feel like to, to be there? Who, if you were in that story, who would you be? And the feedback I've had from the young people is that it makes them think about the Bible in a different way because actually it's like you become part of the story rather than just reading the story. And that's been really exciting to see. And just last week, we, we did Sparklers um, because it was November the 5th. Um, and the highlight of the evening for me was like, we gave all, these, all the youngsters Sparklers um, <coughs> and, and then I said to them, they all were waiting for me to go around and light them. And I said, oh, you don't need these are the ones you shake to light. They're self-activating. And, uh, and there were two of them. They were literally, in fact, one of the young ladies is in this room, and she shook her so much that the sparkler bent. Um, but we, so we have fun as well. I go into the local schools. I go into Bushmead. I go into Warden Hill. And I go into Icknield. And we, we do assemblies. I do assemblies. Um, and these aren't the kind of, you know, let's say what's politically correct, I go in and I tell a Bible story, and I don't water it down. Um, in fairness, this morning we, in Messy Church we did the story of Esther, and I did miss out the parts about people being impaled in, on poles um, and things, because you have to you know, be sensitive to kids. But I go in, I take the theme that the school, and if you're in schools you know what the SEAL theme is, it's the social and emotional aspects of learning. The school give me the theme, I do a little talk on, you know, that, what that is, and then I bring into it a Bible story that's relevant, and there's always a Bible story relevant to every single, in the eight years I've been doing it, every theme they've given me, I've managed to put a Bible story to it. I tell the Bible story, I take in slides so that the kids can interact with it, then do a wacky game. Last week, Thursday, I took in space hoppers, and I had one of the teachers against one of the kids bouncing across the hall on a space hopper. Um, when I come in now and say I'm doing a game at the end, you notice all the kids are looking at me and all the teachers 
uh, looking at the floor because they don't want to get picked for the game. But we're getting the Bible into the schools. And kids are coming away. And at one school, I was known as um, uh, Mr. Lee. Because when I was introduced, they said, oh, do you want to be known as Mr. Pinner or Lee? I don't like Mr. Pinner. It sounds too uh, official. Um, so I said, Lee. But then when the kids all did the good morning, everyone, they, they called me Mr. Lee. And it, it's kind of stuck. So in Bushmead, um, I'm known as, as Mr. Lee. Engage Youth Group. Uh, Engage Youth Group. We were, at one point, once upon a time, like a year ago, we were getting loads and loads of young people. We were sort of having 60 or 70 young people come in. A lot of those have grown up now, but actually what's happened is the group's got a lot smaller. Um, for those of you that know, there was, um, while I, I was off um, late part of the summer when I wasn't well, um, we had an unfortunate incident. Um, some of the young lads who hang around outside the church got involved in a fight, um, and it was it, it, completely unavoidable in, in, in so many ways. But God's really used it because it was a very unfortunate event and it really was, it really upset me at a very deep level. Um, but we've now got a bunch of young people. It's a, lot, it's a lot smaller. And what's happening is, and some of the team are here, Nigel's here. Anyone else? Who else is on the team? I think it's just Nigel you were in this morning. We're really getting to know these young people. And um, we've got them in from year seven up to year 11. But again, we spend time with them at the end and we engage with uh, something from the Bible and we talk to them <coughs> about it and how it's relevant to them today. And I know there's one young lad who comes who, when I first met him, he was in court because um, he was in an awful lot of trouble. But he's now one of the ones that when we do the discussion with him, he's a great, he's a 16 year old, and he's an enormous, great big bloke. He's, his mate brother Lowe looks small. He really is a, he's a big, big, stocky man. Um, but he's engaging with this and he's asking questions. Another week, Nigel really got them thinking about something, and they were engaging with it in a way that actually blew me away. It was, it was really exciting. Um, I'm conscious I said two or three minutes. I'm going to finish in a minute, right? I've just recently, this year, completed a diploma in youth counselling because I was aware that so many young people, their issues are more than just sitting with them and, you know, how school, how's faith, how's this? And that's what my main priority is. My main priority is talking to them about, you know, where's God in your life? Where's, where's, what's faith look like for you? But a lot of them are coming from broken homes. A lot of them are coming from really tragic things in their lives. Um, I met with a young lad the other day, and he, you know, I said to him, at what point did you start getting into trouble? He said, when my dad left. And I said, and then he said, my granddad died. And this is a lad who had no positive male role model in his life. No positive, and, and, and all of a sudden, you know, mum, mum was trying, mum, my, I mean, his mum's a lovely lady, I wouldn't argue with her. Um, <laughs> she's a l real Londoner. Um, but she's got three boisterous kids. They really, really are difficult. And all I've been able to do is actually just spend time with him. Every, every couple of weeks I meet up with him. And we just chat about you know, where he's at, what, what's life. You know, we, all, we always have a bowl of chips, and, and a, I have a sparkling water, or he has a Lucasade. But we pray before we eat, eat the food. And he's got used to it now. When we have the bowl of chips, we pray first. And that, I was just great seeing Oz here this morning. Oz is a, another one, actually, who's on the youth team. And he's been engaging with one of the young people who's really, really quiet. He's very, very insecure. He's got real confidence problems. Oz started coming along and helping. Started off with a game of chess. Yeah? And he just, each week, he was playing chess with this young lad. And then we noticed, you know, you're, Oz, you're the one person that's got this lad actually talking. I think Bob and Nora will you know who I'm talking about, young, young, young Sean. The rest of what I'm doing, you can read in the newsletter. And they're literally, um, in, in this folder, I'll give them out at the end. But what I want to do now, Andrew, can you... So I've put down, what I've asked some of the young people, you get, I'm sorry there's not that many of them, um, I've asked some of the young people who I've worked with over the years, some of these now in their 20s, some are in their late teens, for them to have a chance, to, what, does it, what does it mean having a youth worker, what does it mean having a, a youth pastor to you? So <clears throat> I'm going to leave you to read those for, for five minutes or so until Martin decides um, time's up. But that's what some of the young people have had to say about some of the stuff that, that I've done. But thank you very much for listening. The newsletters I'm going to leave on this windowsill. Please take one um, at the end. It's a, a lot more on it.
Could anybody share one so that, and, and Philip, is there any way we can share so that everybody can get to see a copy? Right. Who, who will be able to pass one to Julie? She can lead it later. Fantastic. Keep reading. I'm just going to allow you to read this as part of our act of worship. Thank you. Come in, if you're coming nice. Come in. So come in, there's plenty of seats.
How are you doing with the reading? You going to need a bit more time at home to read it, or should we? What should we do? Should we? Hmm? A bit more time now. No. Okay. Um, that, that, that's given you something of a taste of what people have been saying about Lee's work and what he's meant to them, as you'll see. Um, we need to perhaps make some more copies. We'll put it on the website, shall we? Put it on the website so that you can access it there and we can circulate this more widely. And do, do take time to read your copy to the end at home. But I was started off this rolling out of... Um, Remembrance Sunday, and then we, for those of you who've just come, we then asked uh, Wendy and David to come forward, um, who are parents to Andrew, who is going to be graduating as a soldier um, in the in the Air Force on Tuesday. And we 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 want to thank David for being a father to Andrew. I don't think he'd be doing what he's doing now if Andrew hadn't been the kind of father he was to this lad. Yeah. And then we began to um, roll into Proverbs. And again and again, we're being told, listen, my son, to what your father says to you. Yeah? And then we became aware, didn't we, how so many young people are growing up without a father in their lives and how Lee has, has been a father to them. So just before we finish this morning, I just want to draw out five different things. We're not going to have a great big biblical exposition now, don't worry. But you don't even need to look this all up. We're going to draw out the five themes that comes through in the book of Proverbs, okay? So fasten your safety belts. Chapter 1, uh, between verses 8, 8 and 19, the basic message is this. If you don't have a father in your life, you're going to grow up getting with the wrong crowd and end up stealing stuff. Right? That's the first thing. The danger of falling into theft and crime. Okay? Have a look at this when you go home. Right, the second thing is, chapter 2 and verse 4, the son is being, it, it, it needs to get wisdom into his life, the accumulated wisdom of the generations from his father. If you look for it as for silver and search for it for hidden treasure, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. So it's this hidden treasure that needs to be brought out into the light, which is part of the Lee's ministry, bringing the hidden treasure out and giving the young people this hidden treasure so that they will find wisdom and have a good life. Number three, usually comes in after you've passed puberty, but goes on for most men most of their life. The danger of falling in with the wrong woman. In fact, Proverbs goes on about this more and more and more. And if you look at chapters 5, 6, 7, and 8, you'll find that he's got almost nothing else to say than listen to your father's adv advice and keep clear of the adulterous woman. Otherwise, you will lose everything in your life. That's tip number three. Okay? Here comes tip number four, number, chapter 3 and verse 27. Do not withhold good from those whom, to whom it is due when it is in your power to act. Yeah? So that is the social gospel in a nutshell. F good fathers will bring up their sons to be generous people to people in need. Yeah? That's part of the ministry of being a father to somebody as they're growing up. Now, here comes tip number five. Chapter three and verses nine to ten. This is the important one for us this morning. <coughs> Here's the tip from the father to the son. Son, honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruits of all your crops. Then your barns will be filled to overflowing and your vats will brim over with new wine. Give of what comes to you, says the father to the son, of the wealth that comes to you from God, however much or however little it may be, and give part of it, a tithe, a tenth, back to the Lord God. And if you do this, then you will be blessed, and your barns will be filled to overflowing. 
That's what the son's tip is to his children. Now, my tip to you is this. We're heading up for a gift day on the 1st of December, Sunday the 1st of December. It tells you about that on the old weekly notice sheets, right? Now, it's at this point that my knees always start knocking as I have to do this. I want to do this, but I always, my knees start to knock at this point, usually, because often you get, uh, a whole load of stony faces when you say this. But on our gift day, on the 1st of December, we're inviting everybody to give generously from whatever God has given to you um, to the work of Christ Church. Yeah? Now, we need to do this to sustain everything we are currently doing. Part of that is to keep a vicar in post, right? Me, whoever follows me, right? Part of it is also to cover the ministry that our youth pastor, Lee Pinner, has. He believes God has called him into this ministry for the long haul, right? He's not ready to hang up the socks and become a, um, go back to lorry driving that he used to do. He believes, and I believe too, that God has called Lee to, to stay with this work for the long haul. So we want to keep the youth worker post open in our church <coughs> into the future because we recognize if we don't, all these fatherless children who are growing up will have no one there, perhaps, yeah, to do the kind of things that you've been reading about that Lee's been telling us about. This is absolutely critical to what, who we are as a people of God. Yeah? So just be generous when it comes to the gift day, okay? The good news is that next Sunday morning in the service, we have um, Dean Tony, who was downstairs earlier in um, Messy Church, who's going to bring the word of God to us and speak in particular about why we give of our resources that we have to the life and mission of our church. Dean is going to do this in a beautiful way, far the be better than I would ever be able to do. It helps that he happens to be an ec economics teacher at Sixth Form College down the road. But he's got a great big heart for God, and he will communicate this to us in a very beautiful way. So be there next Sunday, pencil sharpened, to hear what Dean has to say to us. Okay, now, um, Lee's going to hang around for a little bit now, yeah? And if you've got any questions you want to put to him about this unseen but critical work that he does behind the scenes, just hang around now and speak to him and ask him any question you want to. Is that okay? Yeah? And if you want to get behind this in any particular way, you're free on a, on a Wednesday evening for Engage or something like that, just speak to Lee about that too. Okay. So I'm going to read the, the words that I started with once again. Chapter 4, verse 20, this kind of summary. Would you like to stand, and then we'll have a song, and then we'll go home? My son, pay attention to what I say. Turn your ear to my words. Do not let them out of your sight. Keep them within your heart, for they are life to those who find them and health to one's whole body. Above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. Keep your mouth free of perversity. Keep corrupt talk far from your lips. Let your eyes look straight ahead. Fix your gaze directly before you. Give careful thought to the paths for your feet, and be steadfast in all your ways. Do not turn to the right or to the left. Keep your foot from evil. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Anybody has a song on their heart, if Andrew hasn't got one, put the low. And as this is uh, being sung, we'll just take up the collection as well. It's going to come round now. Thank you, David. Grab your handbags. <laughs>
The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance and give you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Feel free to hang around. Feel free to go. I've got copies of this. These giving these out. Pick up a copy of this newsletter. Hey, something I forgot. Sit down. Hmm. 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 Hmm.